Hello, this is Professor Zaman. Welcome to Hassan Zaman educational video series. In this video, we will learn mesh current analysis or loop current analysis. This method actually pretty similar to branch current analysis that we have learned in our previous video. Only difference is in this method, that is in mesh current method, we will reduce the number of unknowns. We will use the same circuit that we used for branch current analysis to see the difference. Mesh current or loop current analysis. In mesh current or loop current method, we assign loop currents, not branch currents. So let's assign a loop current. Let's call this I1. Let's assign another loop current. Let's call this I2. The concept of mesh current is just a trick to have pure number of variables. Instead of three variables, three branch currents, we have only two variables, I1 and I2. Now the question arises, what are the branch currents now? The way it is assumed that if this is the loop current or mesh current I1, branch current in this branch will be also I1. Branch current in this branch will be also I2. The difference will be only in the shared branches. So this is the shared branch between this loop and this loop. So the current in this branch, if we consider this downward, it will be a combination of these two loop currents. I1 is downward here. You see I1 is downward and I2 is upward. So it will be I1 minus I2. And if you assume the current is upward in this branch, then the, this current will be I2 is upward and I1 is downward, it will be I2 minus I1. And this makes perfect sense because I1 minus I2 is just the opposite of I2 minus I1. And they have opposite directions, so this is fine. Now we will apply KVL equations. Just like in branch current analysis, we will apply KVL equation in the smaller loops. And in this case, we will have two equations and we have two unknowns. So we don't have to write the KCL equation. Actually, KCL is already implemented here by assuming this current is I1 minus I2 or upward in upward direction, I2 minus I1. Let's write down the KVL equations. Let us first write the equation for this loop. Starting from the ground node, going clockwise, this is the voltage rise. Before we write the equation, we have to mark the polarities. This is minus, plus, and since the I1 current is clock, uh, this way clockwise, so we have to put plus here, minus here. I am coming to this one a little later. Let's write this one first. Here, current I2 is this way, so plus will be at the bottom, uh, left side and minus on the right side and this has to be as it is because we cannot change the polarity is of a voltage source. A question here, if we assume this current is downward, we will assume for adding KVL equation for this loop, it is downward so we will put plus on the top and minus at the bottom. And for adding KVL equation in this loop, we will assume current is upward, I2 minus I1. So we will put plus on this side and minus on this side. So this might be confusing for some people, but it is not actually. You could have just had one sign, plus and minus, but we will see the advantage of writing this way. So the equations will be more systematic. So let us first write the equation for this loop. This will be plus 96 
minus 4 i1 and here we will write we will assume current is downward i1 minus i2 so minus 12 i1 minus i2 0 and the equation for this loop is starting from here going upward we will assume current is upward i2 minus i1 so we will consider this plus and minus sign so minus 12 I2 minus I1 minus 6 I2 minus 36 0 instead of writing minus 12 I2 minus I1 you could have written plus 12 I1 minus I2 that means you would have considered the sign on the left side and current I1 minus I2 downward. But that would have been the same thing. It wouldn't be any different. But by doing this, we made sure that all the voltage drops in the resistors come out as negatives. This is negative. Also, this is negative. Only voltage drop or rise of voltage sources cannot be changed. It could be plus or minus. Here it is plus, this is minus. And in this loop, we see the voltage drop in the 4 ohm resistor is negative and voltage drop in the 12 ohm resistor is negative. It makes it basically makes it easier to write correct equations and not to make mistakes. So these are the two equations. From 1 and 2 we can solve these two variables. When you write equation 1, And from equation 2, so we got two new equations, 3, by looking at these two equations we see that if we subtract 4 from 3, this term will cross out, so we will solve for I1. For two I1, one ampere. Now we can use this value in equation 3 or 4 to get I1. Let's use it in equation 2. So it will be 2 times 9 So I2 is equal to 4 ampere. So we have solved the circuit. We have found the current I1 is equal to 9 ampere and I2 is equal to 4 ampere and this current I1 minus I2 downward will be how much 9 minus 4 is 5 ampere or you can say upward current I2 minus I1 will be minus 5 ampere both are correct. Downward current is 5 ampere and upward current is minus 5 ampere. It depends on how you mark the current. And obviously in this case current is downward that's why this came out as positive. Now that we know all the currents we can find voltage drops across resistors. So this voltage drop will be 9 times 4 36 volt and this drop will be 6 times 4 24 volt and this drop will be 5 times 12 60 volts. So this is mesh current or loop current analysis and this is very convenient and useful as you see. We reduce the number of variables in this method to only two instead of three variables in branch current method and it gives us quicker solution. 
and we have to also remember we have only used KVL here. The KCL was not applied in this case because when we assumed the loop currents, the KCL was implicitly used in that assumption. I hope you learned this technique and you will learn more by doing more practice. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.